morning everyone i ashia jindal i kuldeep singh trainee judicial officers from the state of punjab on behalf of the chandigarh judicial academy have the privilege to extend a heartfelt welcome to honorable judges on the dais and of the dais respected director sirs other dignitaries faculty members of chandigarh judicial academy trainee judicial officers from punjab their proud parents and other members of their families they have gathered here for blessing and sharing the joyous moment on crossing a milestone by the newly appointed judicial officers and gracing the valedictory function of one year induction training program of the judicial officers from the state of punjab it is a matter of honor and privilege to have with us honorable mr justice Ravi Shankar Jha Chief Justice Punjab and Haryana High Court and Patron in Chief Chandigarh Board of Governors Chandigarh Judicial Academy Honorable Mr Justice Harinder Singh Sidhu Judge Punjab and Haryana High Court and Member Board of Governors Chandigarh Judicial Academy Honorable Mrs Justice Lisa Gill Judge Punjab and Haryana High Court and Member board of governors chandigarh judicial academy honorable mr justice rajmohan singh judge punjab and haryana high court and member board of governors chandigarh judicial academy honorable mr justice sudhir mittal judge punjab and haryana high court and member board of governors chandigarh judicial academy we are grateful that my lords have spared their precious time for commanding the newly appointed judicial officers shubham karoti kalyanam arogyam dhan sampada shatru buddhi vinashaya deep jyotir namastute meaning thereby salutation to the light of the lamp the originator of auspiciousness health and prosperity that destroys hostile feelings the salutation to the light of that lamp I would like to request all the dignitaries on the dais to commence this occasion by lighting the lamp. Thank you honorable judges and director sirs Now to felicitate the legal luminaries on the dais I would like to request Dr Balram Kumar Gupta the director academics Chandigarh Judicial Academy to present a bouquet to honorable Mr Justice Ravi Shankar Jha Chief Justice Punjab and Haryana High Court and patron and chief of Chandigarh Judicial Academy
may request Shri Ajay Kumar Sharda, Director, Administration, Chandigarh Judicial Academy to present a bouquet of flowers to Honorable Mr. Justice H.A. Siddhu, Judge Punjab and Haryana High Court and President, Board of Governors, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. May I request Ms. Madhu Khanna Lali, faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to present a bouquet to Honorable Mrs. Justice Lisa Gill, Judge, Punjab and Haryana High Court, and member, Board of Governors, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. May I request Shri Amarinder Singh Sher Gill, faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to present a bouquet of flowers to Honorable Mr. Justice Raj Mohan Singh, Judge, Punjab and Haryana High Court, and member, Board of Governors, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. May I now request Mrs. Sonia Kinra, faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to present a bouquet to Honorable Mr. Justice Sudhir Mittal, Judge, Punjab and Haryana High Court, and member, Board of Governors, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. To improve the golden moment of opportunity and catch the good that is in our reach is a great art of life. Though our proud parents have helped us to reach this stage, but the Honorable High Court has given us the opportunity to be groomed and shaped as judicial officers in the Chandigarh Judicial Academy through one year induction training program. So we want to share our experience during this training program and therefore would like to call upon Sri Jugrat Singh and Sri Kesha Vagni Hotri, trainee judicial officers, to come on the dais and be the voice of their colleagues. morning to all the dignitaries on the dais and off the dais and everyone present in the auditorium. Today is the penultimate day of our training. We have experienced a lot during this period. All of us joined judicial service on 17 July 2021 and our formal induction ceremony was held on 2nd August 2021 which we joined from our respective session divisions along with our respected session judges. The COVID-19 pandemic was ongoing and that presented a great challenge. However, this also gave us a unique opportunity to muster our strength and deal with the problem head on. And as such, it is rightly said that all you can control in life is how you respond to life. Under the able guidance of our patron in chief and board of governors, it was decided that our training will be held online. The online training began from 3rd August, which we joined from our respective homes. Though in the initial days, it seemed like how we will manage, as some of us kept on losing the internet connection. But then things settled down and we engrossed ourselves in the training, which started from 10 a.m. and continued till 4.30 p.m. And afterwards, we were given assignments in accordance with the session that we had on that day. Respected faculty members made sure that we, uh, the sessions were interactive and everyone participated equally. Whenever we had any doubts, they were addressed promptly. Respected faculty members made sure that we understood the nitty gritties of civil and criminal procedure and practical aspects of court management. Specific attention was given on how to manage stress. Thereafter, in the month of February, it was decided that we would go to Punjab Police Academy, Philor, for our police training, which was another pleasant aspect of our training. There we learned how to play golf, horse riding, weapons training, and specific attention was given on team building exercises. That is one thing which none of us should never forget about, as teamwork makes the dream work. Throughout our training, in addition to our formal training, we have been advised to take care of our health. That is an integral part of our life. In fact, we were given assignments where we needed to go out for evening walks or do other strength building exercises. Despite the well-managed online training, there was always a feeling 
to be in the Chandigarh Judicial Academy for offline training, as none of us wanted to miss the lifetime chance of being here, because this place is the culmination of the dream that all of us had. Fortunately, we got the chance to be here, about which my colleague, Mr. Keshav Agnihotri, will share his thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jagrat Singh. Now I will be covering the offline aspect of our training. As it is rightly said that man is a social animal and always craves for socializing, similarly, we also yearned for the opportunity to interact with each other and with the learned faculty members in person. When an aspirant begins preparing for the judicial services exam, one of the motivating factors is that one gets the chance to stay in the Chandigarh Judicial Academy. We were fortunate enough that the situation regarding the pandemic improved and now we all will be leaving the academy with a bag full of cherished memories. The offline training module was designed in a way that it aimed both at sharpening our legal acumen and inculcating good habits within us. Time and again, we were motivated to adopt some physical exercise in our daily routines. The early morning yoga sessions were of immense help. It created within us the habit of early rising now we have mastered most of the asanas and particularly those which helps to alleviate the symptoms of cervical and spondylitis as these two conditions are very common amongst the judicial officers. Some of us who didn't know how to swim earlier are now good swimmers. The worthy directors and the learned faculty members would often share their experiences with us. They were shared in a story-like manner and we all would enjoy while learning. Moreover, we learnt a great deal of things which are not written in any book. Life is too short to learn everything from one's own experience and it is best to benefit from others' experiences. The mock trials gave us an insight of the actual court working. We were allotted old case files and all were assigned different roles to play. It is worth mentioning that everyone performed one's role with great devotion and inspiration except of course those who were acting as accused. Since most of us did not have experience at the bar, the mock trials helped us build confidence that we will be able to hold the courts independently. We also visited the Forensic Science Laboratory, Chandigarh. There we had a fruitful discussion with the scientific examiners. They also demonstrated to us the scientific techniques used by them. And we all were astonished by the modern techniques adopted by them. Another wonderful experience was our visit to Village Bhakta at the farmhouse of Honorable Mr. Justice S. S. Saro. There we learned about the practical aspect of revenue law. Apart from perusing the records maintained by the village Patwari, we also took a small tour of the village and went to identify the trijunction point, that is Sihadda. We all enjoyed the sumptuous meal served to us and we all are very grateful to his lordship for his hospitality. During our time, we had the opportunity to interact with two different batches of Maharashtra Judicial Academy. We exchanged ideas and shared the best prevalent practices in our respective states. We, in fact, developed an everlasting bone home with them. Our visit to Karnataka for Bharat Darshan program was a memorable one. We were honored by the gracious presence of some great legal luminaries in Karnataka Judicial Academy. All this exposure to different people and different places has led to the widening of the horizon of our knowledge. Last but not the least, the cultural events that took place during our stay in the academy have helped us reinvigorate our talents. We all are witnessing a sea change amongst ourselves. I will conclude by saying that our stay in the academy has led to our overall development. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jugrat sir and Keshav sir for representing us and giving words to our feelings. Talent and uh, skills are the crops that are nurtured, groomed, and given all possible opportunities to grow and bloom. We are blessed to be guided by our respected director, academics, Dr. Balram Kumar Gupta, who is not only a great motivator to all of us, but a visionary who has from time to time inculcated the qualities of being a good judge. May I request our respected director, sir, to address the august audience.
Honorable Mr. Justice Ravi Shankar Jha, the Peter Familias of Punjab, Haryana, and UT Chandigarh Judiciary. Honorable Mr. Justice H. S. Sidhu, President, Board of Governors, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. Honorable Mr. Justice, Mrs. Justice Lisa Gill. Honorable Mr. Justice Raj Singh and Honorable Mr. Justice Sudhi Mittal, the members of the Board of Governors. Honorable Justices from the High Court, other senior members belonging to the Judicial Service of Punjab and Haryana, the young Judicial Officers, the parents, the faculty members, and director administration, Mr. A.K. Sharda. I'm so very happy this morning that we are meeting physically after a space of more than two years. The earlier batch of the year 2020-21 did not come to the Judicial Academy. The entire foundation training of one year was online and even the valedictory function was online. This particular group, they had the opportunity of having a hybrid training foundation training of one year. In this particular process, we could blend the two together and make some particular contribution towards the making of future judges of these 22 judicial officers, 17 female judges and six male judges group. It augurs so well that I always compare the judicial service with the military service. In the judicial academies, we train the judicial officers and produce the future judges. In the Indian military academy, the cadet officers pass out. Similarly, the two groups, the two services make lot many sacrifices in this particular process. You would be passing out soon in this process and therefore this particular function augurs so very well in this context for that matter. Judicial education and legal education, these are two different aspects altogether. Legal education to impart legal knowledge, but judicial education is to develop, nurture analytical minds, the application of law to different factual situations is the responsibility of judicial education and judicial training for that matter. 21st century belongs to judicial education and training. The National Judicial Academy was set up and became operational on the 5th of September 2002. The foundation of the Chandigarh Judicial Academy was laid on 10th of December 2005 and actually it came into functioning in the year 2009. I recall when in the beginning the National Judicial Academy conducted a test 100 additional district judges 
across the country were given a factual situation, admitted facts of a given case, and they were asked to write judgment in regard to that. Precisely 50 judicial officers gave the verdict of conviction, and equally 50 other judicial officers gave the decision of acquittal. That would demonstrate that judicial training is so very vital in this particular context for that matter. Let me take this opportunity that so far the legal education is concentrating only shaping the lawyers of the country. And therefore, I would suggest a paper on judicial education needs to be introduced in the law schools. That would be an opportunity for those who wish to come to the judiciary, they could be given some exposure in regard to judicial culture, in regard to judicial discipline, and shaping the judges for that matter. I also take this opportunity to make a suggestion that the Judicial Academy, particularly the Chandigarh Judicial Academy, can start one-year master's course in judicial education. That, to my mind, is very important in building up the faculty for the Judicial Academy. We are present, working, on the basis of senior judicial officers come on deputation to the academy for a period of three years. And we also have the retired faculty, retired as district concession judges and other senior positions for that matter. That has been the blending as such. But if we introduce this particular course of one year, it would certainly help us in building the future faculties of the Judicial Academy as well. Only rider that I add why I am suggesting this particular course, the reason is we have the Rajiv Gandhi National Law University in Patiala. My Lord, the Chief Justice, is the Chancellor of that university. We could run the course and the Judicial Academy could be affiliated to Rajiv Gandhi National Law University for the award of master's degree to those who pass out. That's my suggestion and I've taken this particular opportunity for doing that. To the young judicial officers, I would only say Enjoy your work. Be happy minds. If you would enjoy your work, you would be far more productive. And the quality of work would be much better in that particular process. For enjoying your work, you do need to know your nature of work and the hard labor which is required to be put in for that. I would also say be not very talkative judges. Be also not very silent judges. Be participative judges. You have to extract the maximum from the lawyers and therefore that balanced participation is important on your part that you must carry out in that context for that matter. No arrogance, only elegance. 
no ego only humility humility wrapped in humanity in compassion in that context keep the company of constitution constitution is the holy book and in upholding the rule of law you need to really carry forward the constitution of the country if you follow that discipline i'm sure you would shape into good future judges be good human beings that's the best recipe to be a good judge my blessings to you all thank you so much thank you very much sir for the words of wisdom lauzu writes i have just four things to teach simplicity patience compassion and humility we all know that our honorable mr justice harinder singh siddhu judge punjab and haryana high court and president board of governors chandigarh judicial academy is an epitome of these qualities His lordship completed his law graduation in the year 1985 and post graduation in the year 1987 from Punjab University Chandigarh. His lordship served in the office of Advocate General on different posts in in the state of Punjab before elevation in the High Court of Punjab and Haryana as additional judge on 28 December 2013 and thereafter as permanent judge. on 19 december 2014 may i kindly request his lordship to share pearls of wisdom from his rich experience honorable the chief justice the patron in chief of the judicial academy honorable judges members of the board of governors of the academy honorable judges justice saro justice daliwal justice atri dr gupta director academics sharda ji the director administration the judicial officers parents and family members i am delighted to have the opportunity to be a part of this valedictory function of the completion of the induction training program of the judicial officers i extend my warm felicitations to those present here especially the young judicial officers this is a joyous day for the judicial officers and their parents a moment to be proud of you all are set to embark on a very challenging but satisfying journey of being tasked with the duty of administering justice to the citizens of this country high and low rich and poor without fear or favor affection or ill will today you have become part of a great family the judicial fraternity of the country your responsibilities have increased you will be on test and trial every day of your life both in your personal and judicial work the training of at the academy will have prepared you the better to handle your charge the chandigarh judicial academy has compiled a handbook for judicial officers it contains two addresses by justice lahoti former cji one is the first sitalwar memorial lecture the second is the first foundation training program conducted by the judicial academy these lectures 
actually contain all the distilled wisdom we have been reading. If you have read those lectures, all that needs to be said is there, the canons of judicial ethics, the manner in which a judicial officer has to conduct himself, the qualities he's required to imbibe, what he's required to forego. There is no point in, you must have read it a couple of times. All of us need to read it again and again. I would only touch two topics. There is a beautiful tract by one Arnold Bennett, How to Live 24 Hours a Day. This is very important for people in the judicial fraternity. Arnold Bennett was a young clerk in London law office. He dreamt of having a brilliant and successful career in writing. He took, took stock of himself. He knew he possessed the qualities of a writer. He came to the conclusion that time was his most precious commodity. Time was the most useful tissue of his life and he must therefore not waste any part of it. He determined to make the best possible use of 24 hours a day and make every hour count. It worked. He budgeted his time that every hour served some useful purpose. It worked beyond his most ambitious dreams. Stories and articles from his pen began to pile up. He published his first novel. His friends asked, where do you find the time? He was irritated every time he heard the question. He didn't find the time. He had the time as everyone else had. So he wrote the tract and a paragraph from the scene. He says, time is the most inexplicable raw material of everything. With it, all is possible. Without it, nothing. The supply of time is truly a daily miracle, an affair genuinely astonishing when one examines it. You wake up in the morning and lo, your purse is magically filled with 24 hours of the unmanufactured tissue of the universe of your life. It is yours. It is the most precious of possessions. No one can take it from you. It is unstealable. No one receives either more or less than you receive. In the realm of time, there is no aristocracy of wealth, no aristocracy of intellect. Genius is never rewarded by even an extra hour a day, and there are no punishments. Waste your infinitely precious commodity as much as you will. The supply will never be withheld from you. Moreover, you cannot draw on the future. Impossible to get into debt. You can only waste the passing moment. You cannot waste tomorrow. It is kept for you. You cannot waste the next hour. It is kept for you. He goes on to say, you have to live 24 hours of daily time. Out of this, you have to spin health, pleasure, money, content, respect, and the evolution of your mortal soul. Its right use, its most effective use, is a matter of the highest urgency and the most thrilling actuality. It all depends on that. If one cannot arrange that an income of 24 hours a day shall exactly cover all proper items of expenditure, one does muddle one's whole life indefinitely. This is very important because as judicial officers, you'll be hard pressed for time. Time management is of essence. One small other thing about hypocrites the famous Hippocratic Oath. Now, Hippocrates in his life had studied all known methods of study, drugs, instruments. He had organized into a rational system of medicine. Nearing the end of his life, he reflected with pleasure on whatever he had done. He reflected with pleasure that his work would go on, that his disciples would carry forward his teachings. His writings would be used in schools, to train and prepare others for practice of medicine. Then his mind turned to the young men who had trained. They were ambitious. Most of them were serious and well-intentioned fellows. 
but what about the principles and ideals? What about their ethical standards? Character and personal integrity were very important in the practice of medicine. Hippocrates found out, recollected his entire collection of works. He said there is one, more, one thing missing. One thing he must do, the most important thing. He realized that in a profession like medicine, the highest of personal standards must be maintained. The intimate relationship between the physician and patient called for a rigid code of ethics. Knowledge and skill were not enough. The physicians must be men of utmost honor and trust. So then he devised the Hippocratic Oath. The oath is relevant not only to the medical profession, it is relevant to the judicial profession as well. I'll just read out a few words of that oath. I solemnly swear that by which I hold most sacred, that I'll be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members, that I will lead my life in practice, my art in uprightness and honor, that unto which whatsoever house I shall enter, it shall be for the good of the sick to the utmost of my power. I hold myself aloof from wrong, from corruption, and from the temptation of others to vice. That whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of men, which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviolably secret. These things do I promise, and in proportion as I am faithful to this, with that promotion may happiness and good repute be ever mine, the opposite if I shall be forsworn. As the judicial officers embark on their very interesting journey, my best wishes to them. The patron in chief would uh, guide them and inspire them with his illustrious words. Thank you. We are grateful, uh, my lord, for sharing deep knowledge with us and making us aware of the time management which is necessary for motivated and stress-free life. Thank you, my lord. This is much awaited event in training judicial officers' life as it gives the returns to the efforts put in by them throughout their academic endeavor. It is a moment full of joy, a moment about pride and accomplishment, a moment of celebration. It gives a sense of achievement and responsibility for fulfilling further commitments. Today, our hearts are filled with sangam of feelings, fulfillment, anxiety, and eagerness. Now, it's time to felicitate the achievement of the trainee judicial officers by awarding the certificates. I request the trainee judicial officers to come upon the stage and collect these certificates as their names are called upon. May I now humbly request the honorable dignitaries to join us for certificate distribution. Miss Jessica Vidge. Shri Keshav Agni Hotri. Miss Ashia Jindal. Miss Jyoti Kumari. Shri Jogaraj Singh Siddhu. Miss Neha Jindal.
ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਜਸਵਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਿਸ ਨਵਨੀਤ ਕੌਰ ਧਾਲੀਵਾਲ ਮਿਸ ਸਮੀਖਸ਼ਾ ਜੈਨ ਮਿਸ ਪਰਮਿੰਦਰ ਪਿੰਦੂ ਮਿਸ ਜਸਕਿਰਨ ਸੋਂਦ ਮਿਸ ਗੁਰਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਕੌਰ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਜੋਗੇਸ਼ ਗਿਲ ਮਿਸ ਮਮਤਾ ਮੈਮੀ ਮਿਸ ਰਮਨਦੀਪ ਕੌਰ ਮਿਸ ਚੰਦਨ ਮਿਸ ਸ਼ਿਵਾਨੀ ਮਿਸ ਸੁਖਮੀਤ ਕੌਰ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਕੁਲਦੀਪ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਿਸ ਸਿਮਰਨ ਮਿਸ ਭਾਵਨਾ ਭਾਰਤੀ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਪਰਵੀਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਮਾਈ ਲੋਰਡਸ fragrance of flowers spread only in the direction of the wind but the goodness of a person spreads in all directions aristotle writes we are what we repeatedly do excellence therefore is not an act but a habit we are delighted to have with us honorable mr justice ravi shankar jha chief justice punjab and haryana high court and patron in chief chandigarh judicial academy my lord is the grandson of eminent indian ju- uh, uh, jurist and educationist dr v s jha who is also recipient of padma bhushan and former vice chancellor of banaras hindu university 
and chairman Commonwealth Education Lies in London. My Lord graduated in the year 1986 from Rani Durgavati Vishwavidyalaya, Jabalpur. My Lord enrolled himself as an advocate in 1986 with the State Bar Council, Madhya Pradesh. My Lord joined the chamber of Shri P. P. Naulekar, who was later on elevated as Judge of Supreme Court of India and also served as Lok Ayukt. My Lord also extensively dealt with the constitutional tax service and criminal matters as an advocate in the High Court of Madhya Pradesh. My Lord was appointed as an additional judge of High Court of Madhya Pradesh in 2005 and became permanent judge in 2007. My Lord was appointed as acting chief justice of High Court of Madhya Pradesh on 10th of June 2019 and was elevated as chief justice of Punjab and Haryana High Court on 6th October 2019 i request our honorable chief justice to address the audience and enlighten us my respected brothers and members of the board of this academy justice masi the administrative judge of punjab and haryana high court senior judges of this court present here justice saro justice dhariwal justice atri former judges of this court the registrar general and the registry director academics director administration of the academy young new judges respected members of their family and others present here uh, i am not sure whether i should speak in english or in hindi no it's a, whatever is convenient are you able to understand <laughs> language is such a thing it's it's you know someone great man has said that the relationship of a person with his language either english or hindi is like that of his wife he loves the wife a lot but he has no control over it but <laughs> in any case uh, i don't know whether i am able to the family members are here or not uh, are able to understand english or not but then i'll speak in english today all of you are you my young friends are going to enter into active judging and uh, you're going to administer law and the law is something that's very powerful it's also intoxicating in the sob of all though this be you ever so high with the law is above you phrase is attributed to certain certain judas elsewhere but uh, as a matter of fact and few people know this that in the brahad aranyak upanishad it is said tade tat chatrasya chatram sadharma tasma dharma it is the king of king chatrasya chatram law is the king of kings and there is nobody superior to law in fact in the mahabharat at one stage god himself says i am satya dharma nibandhanat i am bound by satya and dharma even god is bound by law and truth and these are ancient precepts of this country ancient prehistory prevedic so you are going to now handle something that is going to be very powerful you must know its importance also this is though it's a 
day of rejoicing for you but to my mind and i shouldn't be one to act as a wet blanket but this probably is the beginning of a very very captive life for you from now on you are going to be under a microscope not microscope not, ju not just judicially because the father and the grandfather are always watching you but also in the eyes of public in the sense that it's not just your orders your judgments your behavior in court your interaction with lawyers your judgments that are going to be under scrutiny but it's also going to be your private life that is going to be subjected to the minutest scrutiny perhaps this is one thing that nobody bargains for and this is one thing that nobody is prepared for you are trained in the academy like the director of academics uh, dr gupta told you you are going to be judged on your law be good as a judge be a good judge uh, uh, be a good judge and know the law and decide it rightly and all that is okay but every movement made by you is now going to be judged by the public see you you had a hybrid training part uh, uh, vc part physical during this pandemic a lot of you saw heard and even experienced those instances where people were sitting wearing a coat and a tie but were actually wearing a bermuda and got exposed hilarious i mean you could the new instances were multifarious different different categories of amusement but you would notice that during all this though hearings took place through vc you did not find even a single instance where a judge was caught doing this so while you may feel that as a normal person you had the 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 luxury of doing all these thing indulging in this kind of thing as a judge even when you are sitting at home in a closed room with just a monitor in front of you you have to be so particular with yourselves that you are dressed dressed from top to bottom properly i i narrate an instance to you about a teacher i had in school he was always in coat and tie perfectly mannered perfect behavior and he was followed and even today even after his death i think he has the biggest fan following as a school teacher when i became a lawyer and uh, then i happened to meet him because he wanted his son to his son also came into the profession it's only then that i came to know that he was a chain smoker he was a chain smoker he taught children for 30 years nobody came to know not a single student ever came to know that he was a chain smoker whenever you would see him he was properly dressed properly behaved doing all the right things see this is the exposure that you would be subjected to and this is what you have to be careful of there's another instance that i i've quoted at several places there's a school in jawalpur it's in the name of my great grandfather there was a principal there and this parent had to visit the school and he saw that this child had come late the gate was open there was nobody at the gate and this child came he parked his cycle there caught his ears and did 10 sit ups touched the ground and then entered the school 
so this uh, parent he looked about here and there why is why did this child do this so he asked the the chokidar that was there the guard why did this child do this and there's nobody here he said you see the principal here is a very very strict person and he is very devout very religious so on thursdays he he does extensive puja but because he does that he is 3 minutes late when he comes to school and that principal before entering the school parks his cycle catches his ears and does 10 sit ups and only then enters the school and that is why nobody in this school is required to be told that when you made a mistake even if nobody is watching what you have to do you are people who are now going to be watched by your friends by your colleagues by your family by everybody and unless and until you do not set up such example for your friends for the people for the society see if you if you feel that you are only a judge only when you sit in the chair and after you are off the chair you would all doing all sorts of things next day when you sit on that chair the lawyer who has seen you do so many things in public the litigant who has seen you do so, all these things in public is never going to have faith in you he'll enter your court with the impression that this man is not a trustworthy person this person is actually what he what i have seen him in the market or in public he is only acting here so what i am trying to tell you is that your life has now undergone a change life not just your working brother siddhu was very particular about time and rightly so it all starts with punctuality every time now you have trained i was very happy to see the kind of training program that has been that has changed here because since the time i have come now it's nearly 3 years i have come to the academy on a few occasions very few occasions but i have already always been saying and pressing change the system of training here you were already through the examination and academic part even before you enter the academy here we train you to become good judges we don't teach you law you already are presumed to know the law and you are presumed to keep on studying and learning the law throughout your life what we teach you here is to become good judges another thing the director academic said if you are a good human being you will be a good judge wonderful but i'll add a caveat to that and i have given this example elsewhere elsewhere also christ says gandhi ji says somebody stacks slaps you on one cheek given the other cheek good human being somebody makes a mistake pardon him good human being now a person comes to you and says so and so has committed an offense by slapping me on my right cheek he has committed so and so offense punish him will you tell him let him slap the other cheek also because he is a good human being as a judge somebody commits a murder comes to you he's it's proven without doubt that that man has committed murder you are sitting in that chair where unfortunately you have to take a decision to punish him even hang him would you say no i am a good human being pardon because i feel the circumstances under which you committed the murder are such that maybe you were justified in doing so so always remember good human being yes but when you sit in the chair of a judge you are 
put through this torture of all the time suppressing your good humanness and doing justice and why so why do you feel that what you are doing when you implement law is against human values there's a there's a common general perception to this effect and i don't subscribe to that the reason is this what is dharma what is law that we just talked about it says dhara dharma ityau dharmo dharayate praja yat sa dharana sanyuktam sa dharma iti nischaya what is dharma what is law law is that which binds the polity the society law is that which uplifts the society as a whole not the individual the moment you pardon somebody who has committed a crime on human grounds what is the message that you are sending to the society what are you doing to the society you are not binding it together you are not uplifting it and therefore the rules of dharma the rules of law are much more stringent much more stricter be a good human being yes definitely be a good human being but always realize no keep in mind the difference between being a good human being and being a good judge also remember you are not going to you can never and you should not act as an ngo you are not sitting there as a judge to do good to others you are your task is to administer justice when you want to do good get off the chair and do it but when you are deciding the matter don't be swayed by these other issues you have to stick to law otherwise there will be anarchy otherwise there will be chaos why i am a good human being but my degree of goodness is 3 degree just mr gupta is a good human being his degree of goodness is 7 just as masi is still better human being his degree of goodness is 10 the same man when he comes before me i'll say i won't pardon you but the same man comes before mr gupta he'll say i'll pardon you to the extent of 50% and the same man he comes before justice masi he'll say i won't pardon you at all justice the system of justice the system of delivery of justice will be destroyed because the because one of the cardinal principles of justice delivery system is consistency is uniformity so please always remember i thought i should clarify this aspect to all of you that be good human beings only when you will be a good human being you will be a good judge but always remember that your task as a judge your decision making process as a judge cannot be swayed on the ground of your feelings on the grounds of your humanness on the grounds of compassion these are things these luxuries are not available to judges these luxuries are can be indulged in by people who are not sitting on this chair from which they have to deliver justice so please these are the few things that i thought another thing before i proceed i want to clarify and that is about this what the just the director academic said about uh, some course in in uh, training since the time i i've come here i've been stressing and i did this i was a director of the academy for a number of years in madhya pradesh there i had developed a system of creating a faculty pool faculty cannot be created by affiliating it with a university this teaching part it's otherwise it will become a bs degree which is a absolute failure in the country training you have to in the academy you have to interact with the trainers amongst themselves 
you have to interact with master trainers in other academies you have to have training programs amongst the trainers you have to create a group of master trainers from amongst the trainers the trainers must train master trainers must train the trainers whatever is taught in the class has to be taken up by the person who is training before the group of trainers he should first experiment what he, he is going to do with, with the the uh, inmates the candidates and then implement it improve upon it this is the way you create a pool of faculties pool of faculties cannot be created by putting them through a course because the difference that you have felt and you have implemented in the academy regarding a law graduate and the same graduate becoming a judge where you have to give him practical training the same difference is there between a degree person who has obtained a degree in training and a person who has gone through practical aspects of training so i have been stressing on this from the very beginning i am quite sure you will take it up so in in all of this now that we've i've given you a few background a few precepts just as siddhu gave you a few the director of academics gave you a few but like shakespeare says his few precepts in my memory look thou character i can elaborate on that but since we are on shakespeare we can continue with that he says give thy thoughts no tongue nor any unproportioned thought its act i think this plain english old english but english please when you sit in courts where you are out somewhere whatever you say be very careful about it give thy thoughts no tongue nor any unproportioned thought its act don't act upon unproportioned thoughts also this is this is the part where i just told you that this change in your life is coming about do not dull thy palm with entertainment of you each new hatched unfledged comrade friendship is something that you will now have to be very selective about because a person is known by the company he keeps here in the high court we are faced day in and day out with complaints where people are maligned they are put through a lot of harassment only because they are seen with somebody so the company that you keep henceforth like i said life is not going to be easy for you now costly thy habit as thy purse can buy rich not gaudy don't aspire for things that is that are beyond your salary don't live beyond your salary costly thy habit as thy purse can buy neither a borrower nor a lender be for for loan oft loses both itself and friend and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry i am quoting shakespeare i i am incapable of saying these things but this is what he says neither a borrower nor a lender be for loan oft loses both itself and friend and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry if you are a borrower your friends will start avoiding you your colleagues will start avoiding you everybody will start avoiding you and that would also indicate that you are living beyond your means he says this above all to thine own self be true and it follows as a night the day thou canst not then be false to any man if you want to be truthful as a judge the first thing that you have to do is to be true to yourself you cannot it is only you who knows and who will always know what you are doing outside the court what you are doing when you are alone and unless and until you don't control yourself then 
you will not be able to control yourself in court so be true to thyself when you when you are true to yourself only then you will be true to able to, uh, you will be able to true uh, to be true to others you will be able to deliver real justice justice which will be accepted even if bitter so ultimately though the system has changed in the old days before appointment of a judge his knowledge his erudition etc were not the first primary thing that was looked into it was character if you have no character you may be a genius but you are of no use to anybody you are no use to yourself also so character is the most important thing here you may err in law you may write a judgment that is maybe a little short of what it should be doesn't make any difference but if you write a brilliant judgment but there is something else behind writing that brilliant judgment and that is the flaw in your character nobody is going to appreciate it and you are a lost man yourself so looking to your character is the most important thing i think i was given some 20 minutes but i have exceeded that i'm sorry i wish all of you the very best i hope you become the flag bearers of the judiciary in future you do the punjab judiciary proud you do your parents proud i hope that you do something that is so outstanding that your parents your relatives all of you all the time are proud of you i wish al utmost success to all of you all the entire batch but let me also tell you another thing that today is not a day of achievement for you today is a day of benediction i was very happy to see that you that in this function you did organize a, a set of this thing where the young judges came up and they re, they recited and recounted their experience and they ex, they expressed their gratefulness for their faculty members this is a day of benediction this is the day which is selected for you to thank your teachers your faculty members for all the hard work that they have they have done on you and to express your gratitude to them i am quite sure that you will do so after this program is over in the end i'll congratulate and i wish to congratulate the director of academics the director of administration each and every faculty member of this academy for the wonderful job that they have done in these difficult circumstances hybrid training was not easy full virtual training was not easy but the way they have worked during this pandemic is most creditable and they have done an honor to this academy and to themselves i congratulate them for this thank you i wish all the best to you thank you my lord for your valuable advice and stimulating speech that has invigorated all our spirits gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul i request trainee judicial officers from punjab to present token of respect to the honorable dignities on behalf of chandigarh judicial academy I request Ms Jessica Vich and Shri Praveen Singh to present token of respect to honorable the chief justice Ravi Shankar Jha
I request Ms. Navjot Kaur to present token of respect to Honorable Mr. Justice Harinder Singh Sidhu. I request Ms. Bhavna Bharti to present token of respect to Honorable Mr. Justice Lisa Gill. I request Ms. Jyoti Kumari and to uh, present token of respect to Honorable Mr. Justice Raj Mohan Singh. I request Ms. Simran to present token of respect to Honorable Mr. Justice Sudhir Mittal. I request trainee judicial officers from the state of Punjab to present token of respect on behalf of the entire batch. I request Shri Keshav Agni Hotri and Shri Jaswinder Singh to present token of respect to Honorable the Chief Justice Ravi Shankar Jha. I request Shri Jugra Singh Sidhu and Ms. Sukhmeet Kaur to present a token of respect to the President and Members Board of Governors, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. I request Ms. Shivani to present token of respect to Dr. Balram Kumar Gupta, Director, Academics, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. I request Ms. Mamta to present token of respect to Shri Ajay Kumar Sharda, Director, Administration, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. Now I request to Shri H.S. Bangu, faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to please come on the stage and accept token of respect from Ms. Namneet Kaur Dhaliwal. I request Ms. Namneet Kaur Dhaliwal to present the same. I request Shri Briam Lal, faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to accept token, token of respect from Shri Yogesh Gill. I request Shri Yogesh Gill to present the same. I request Shri Pardeep Mehta, faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to please come on the stage and accept token of respect from Ms. Shamiksha. I uh, request Ms. Miksha to please present the same. I request Ms. Madhu Khanna Lali, additional district and sessions judge, come faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to accept token of respect from Ms. 
Parminder Pindu. I request Ms. Parminder Pindu to present the same. I request Shri Amrinder Singh Shergil, Additional District and Sessions Judge, come faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to accept token of respect from Ms. Chandan. I request Ms. Chandan to present the same. I request to Mrs. Sonia Kinra, faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to please come on the stage and accept the token of respect from Ms. Navani, uh, Ramandeep Kaur. I request to Ms. Harshali Chaudhary, faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to please come on the stage and accept token of respect from Ms. Gurpreet Kaur. I request Ms. Gurpreet Kaur to present the same. I request Ms. Karuna Sharma, faculty member, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to accept token of respect from Ms. Jaskiran Sond. I request Ms. Jaskiran Sond to present the same. As we come to the close of a valedictory ceremony, I invite Sri Ajay Kumar Sharda, Director Administration, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, to extend the vote of thanks. <coughs> Honorable Mr. Justice Ravi Shankar Jha, Chief Justice Punjab and Aran High Court, and Patron in Chief, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. Honorable Mr. Justice Harinder Singh Sidhu, Judge, Punjab and Haryana High Court, and President, Board of Governors, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. Honorable Mrs. Justice Liza Gill, Judge, Punjab and Haryana High Court, and Member, Board of Governors, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. Honorable Mr. Justice Rajmohan Singh, Judge, Punjab and Haryana High Court, and Member, Board of Governors, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. Honorable Mr. Justice Sudhir Mittal, Judge, Punjab and Haryana High Court and members, member, Board of Governors, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. All the dignitaries of the dais, Dr. Balram K. Gupta, Director Academics, Chandigarh Judicial Academy, faculty members of Academy, trainee judicial officers and members of their family. Good afternoon. It is my great privilege to propose a vote of thanks on the occasion of this valedictory ceremony Today, 22 judicial officers from the state of Punjab have successfully completed their one-year induction training program conducted by the Chandigarh Judicial Academy. I congratulate and wish them successful career as judicial officer. I express my heartfelt gratitude to Honorable Chief Justice Ravi Shankar Jha, our patron chief, for sparing his valuable time and kindly consenting to be the chief guest on this occasion. Your Lordship, your advice made today have provided so much value to our young judicial officers. Our deep sense of gratitude to your lordship for your kind and inspiring words, which are going to guide and encourage them in future. Your lordship is our guiding force and strength. The academy looks forward for your lordship's continuous support. Thank you, your lordship, for your words of wisdom to the young judicial officers. We are also thankful to Honorable Mr. Justice Harinder Singh Sidhu, President, Board of Governors, for sparing his valuable time to preside over this valedictory ceremony. My Lord, inspiring word to young judicial officers will go a long way to help them in performing their judicial functions. Honorable Mrs. Justice Liza Gill, Honorable Mrs. Justice Raj Mohan Singh, Honorable Mrs. Justice Sudhir Mittal, members, Board of Governors, Lordship, the Academy thrives and flourishes under your able guidance. Thank you, Your Lordships, for gracing the occasion. We are also thankful to all the dignitaries of the dais and members of the families of judicial officers for being part of this event. I am also thankful to Dr. Balram K. Gupta, Director Academics and Faculty Members, who organized and executed the 
online and physical sessions and staff members of Chandigarh Judicial Academy for their contribution in induction training program and in this valedictory ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, sir. As Robert Frost writes, the woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. We trainee judicial officers promise to continue to try hard to excel in serving the people. As we have been trained here in the Chandigarh Judicial Academy, we promise to exhibit the qualities Im imbibed in us during this training. The qualities of proficiency, performance, and productivity. We promise to keep it always in mind that this service requires discipline equivalent to what is observed in the military. On this note, let's conclude this remarkable, memorable, and knowledgeable valedictory session. On behalf of the institution, we sincerely thank the dignitary for being inspirational to us this afternoon. I extend my gratitude to all family members, family of Chandigarh Judicial Academy for their wholehearted support rendered in the success of this valedictory session. Thank you very much. The ceremony would be concluded by playing our national anthem. Before that, I have an announcement to make. All the dignitaries on the dais Faculty members and trainee judicial officers are requested to gather outside the auditorium for group photograph. And all the dignitaries on the dais and of the dais, faculty members, trainee judicial officers and their parents are cordially invited for lunch. Now I would request everyone to please stand up in the honor of our national anthem. जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे 